Hello, how are you? Um, I won't show you in any work tonight, uh, today. Um, I'm the creative director of BASE, uh, BASE Design. Um, we are a branding studio uh, with offices. We started here in Brussels 25 years ago. Uh, we have offices in New York, uh, Melbourne and Geneva. We have uh, great clients and we don't specialize in any of them. So we're not specialized in uh, culture or corporate or beauty. We're doing every, a bit of everything and we keep small and big clients. Um, I'm also uh, the author of the five minute posters, which are posters that I designed in uh, five minutes about dots about design and communication uh, like these um, that you see here that I throw on the internet sometime if you follow me. I'm going to talk today about, and I guess you are all from what we call creative industries. So I'm going to talk about how to transform our own studios, our own company. So this was me uh, ten, 10 years ago. Uh, I was basically this creative director that was like super sure that he was creative, obsessed about controlling good ideas, uh, good design, logos, poster, um, obsessed with that traveling between my different studios uh, like a crazy guy. Um, these, we were basically all like this in my studio, like chickens without heads. Uh, Lunch time was looking like this, basically in front of a computer. I mean, you probably know that. Uh, and very often at night, we would see this, like people alone, working, working on something they don't even remember what it was and why it was, why they had to stay late to do it. Um, the main word at that time in my creative business was this. Stress was at the center of everything. Um, yeah, actually stress like this. It was really like this tension the whole time, but we were great. We were doing good work and we were so creative. My team was feeling like this, so we had pressure the whole time and we felt that was like totally normal to accept the pressure from outside, from the clients, from, uh, from anyone actually. It was like, of course, uh, that's the way it goes in a creative business. And so what happened when you feel this pressure is that you uh, blame your clients, right? So um, my client is a dick, he doesn't understand anything, he's stupid, I'm genius, he's, uh, he's stupid, so it doesn't work. Um, I was also this kind of creative director having a lot of assistance. So, uh, and the problem uh, of a lot of us in this kind of pattern is that obviously these people are many, uh, very often very great people. They don't try to find the best uh, design or the best solution, the best project. They try to guess what's in your head. And that's difficult because my head was fucked up and I said, I didn't know what I want actually, but that was the, the pattern at the time. The other thing that was happening, and I think in a lot of creative agencies, is that you split two groups. You have the management team, and these are the serious people. The serious people, they can manage the planning, they can manage time, they can manage clients, but they can't have ideas, right? And then you have the other, the kids, which are the creative people. And the creative people, oh, they're kids, so they, they cannot manage uh, planning, they cannot be on time, they cannot present to clients. So what happened is that these two groups fight, and they were fighting in my company as well. So um, that's the first take, it was like, why do we have to split these people? Why do we split people between creative and non-creative and not creative? Are you all creative? Are you sure you are creative? Are you sure behaving creatively every day? Not sure. I don't know. I'm not. Sometimes I'm very uncreative, stupid, dumb, and a lot of people are. So then the week, how did we organize the week in the studios at base? Well, it's simple. It works like this. It worked like that. So you have basically chaos. So poor communication the whole time. Uh, and people running around. So basically when this is the pattern of an organization, you continue at night and you end up working at night 
alone and something you don't know why you're doing that. And of course, you're feeling your weekends as well. But the crazy thing at the time is like, it was like, of course, this is the creative industry, so of course you do that. And then when, when I picture my team in this, it was like more like this. Okay, so that was like basically how it was working. And then one day, I received um, a mail from um, Kim Meyer. He's today uh, one of the creative directors at Nike in Portland. And Kimu was brave enough to send me this. He sent me just this picture that he did. It was a drawing pretty accurate of the base studio and where we had kings, children, and slaves everywhere. And I was like, this is not okay. This is not the company I want for me, for myself, and for the people that are working here. And the problem, at least for me, I studied graphic design is here at La Cambre in, in Brussels, in an art school. And in, in a design school, you teach that great design is great design skills. So I've been teach to design logos and work with colors and words and do posters and concepts and campaigns but nothing about human skills. I never was teach to how to behave with other people. I, I, I didn't know, and we all didn't know. So I think that was a, it's one of the key of the problem, is that we, in, create, in creative industries, we take that totally away. Oh, that's my slide, so I can drink something. <laughs> so, so, we gathered with my partners and we were exhausted and we said, this cannot continue, we have to change. And that's where it gets magical, is then when you realize that you can be creative with your own company, with your own business, you can transform anything. So the first thing we did, I did a tour and I went in the different studios and I asked the people in one-to-one, -one, what are the things that matters to them? What do they want? But everybody, not only the creative people, not only the designers, everybody, secretaries, uh, account managers, uh, project leaders. And to my surprise, the four same answers came from everyone. The same one, the, the first one was, I want to learn every day. If I learn, I would never leave the company. Okay, how do you do a company where you learn every day? I don't know. The second thing, I want ownership on my, on my project. I, I would like to do it within, in a team, but I would, I would love to say this is my project. I did it. I want to be proud of it. I want to meet the client. The third one was, I would like us to work as a team, creative and management together. It's simple, no? Don't be, not be slip, uh, split sorry, uh, between the two groups. And finally, they all said, I want more autonomy. I want more time and I want more flexibility. So basically work better, work less, learn and have fun. We had no clue how to do that. So we took coaching, we took, I, I went like for many years to the shrink to train to transform my behavior on how to be a creative leader. I'm still learning. So basically going from that guy to that guy. So I, it took me six years to transform myself, to just change how to address people, how to talk with my team, how to come in the morning and say hello to everyone in the company. Like this simple thing that you have to change, to change your company, you have to start with yourself. The other thing that we change is that usually in our creative industries, you split by kind of skills and categories, right? So you have the strategy group, and then you have the designers, and then you have the digital team. But basically, we said, fuck this. We want this. So it's not that everybody has to do everything, but everybody has to be interested in everything. So the only way probably to do that is to mix people. So little by little, while we were doing that and explaining that to the team, something strange happened. The team started to take control of the exterior, control of what they wanted, what we expected from our daily work. By doing two things, learning to say no. No is not a negative answer. No, dear client, I cannot do this project for next Tuesday. Yes, I can do it for Friday. It's, it, it's in your benefit. Just listen to us. So, no, yes, no, yes. 
the, the, the day we started to say no, we were getting better. Second thing is obviously take time to organize your time. But the main thing we did was to create new rituals in our company. I will explain them quickly. We call them on Monday morning challenges of the week. Okay, Monday morning, 9.30, everybody together. In every studio at base, 9.30, Monday morning, 9.30, Monday morning everybody gathers. What do you do? You just tell the team the three challenges you will have this week. The week will be chaos, you will have changes, but you have, and you tell the other, the commitment that you do to yourself and to the rest of the team. So it's very concrete. I, I plan to do this project, for example, for Thursday night, and I will be finished for Thursday night. So basically, this is forward visioning. You decide for yourself, you're an adult, and you, um, you just tell your objective for the week. The second uh, ritual is creative meeting. On Wednesday morning, three hours, we gathered all of us in the creative meeting, not only the creative team, everybody in the agencies together. And the cornerstone of the creative meeting is called inclusions. So each creative meeting is not led by me. It was for a while until they said, it's boring. It's always the same thing with you. So I said, OK, now it's going to be each time a different person. And it always started with this system of, of inclusion, which is basically each one of us has to answer these four questions. What is my energy today? How do I feel? So if you have fought with your boyfriend uh, the, the last night, you will be like this, right? You will, be, you will not be in good condition to work. So you have to express that. It's crazy on how con when people can express their frustration or problem regarding work or personal life, you have empathy in your studio. These people got help immediately. The second thing is what happened to me since last week. Third is what are my expectations for this meeting. And next one is, what will be my contribution, my contribution? Then we have models. We work together on specific projects. We have interns presenting their work. We can have a partner explaining the number. We open the numbers to the whole company. So it's a constant update about the news about the company. We can uh, have work sessions. We can have like this uh, business developer explaining the strategy. And for that, you need space. This is the center agora of base Brussels. This is New York and this is Geneva. So this is extremely important now at base. Okay, we're all egocentric, creative people, but the main thing is how, to, how do you work in a team? The next ritual is super important. Thursday lunch. So that's very stupid. It doesn't have anything to do with work but one or two people of the studio have to cook for the other. It's super simple. It's in every base, Thursday lunch is now a key moment. So sometimes it looks like this, sometimes it looks like that. That was Fabian, actually, he's here. Um, and, and the lunch, actually, now at base, is not anymore in front of the computer. It looks like this now, in our garden, uh, when it's good weather. And this time, it's at least one hour. It's a great moment just being together as people that like to work together. So um, it's a good moment. So that's a good advice. Uh, cook for your teammates. It will really help your creative uh, abilities. So finally, the feedback of the week on Friday. What do we do? We go back on the challenges. And we see if we did them or not. If you do it, if you did it, you have a, a feeling of fulfillment. You're happy. You can go on weekend, being like open, play with your kids, do something else. If you did not, you have to explain why. No, I missed it because I didn't prepare well enough. So you learn and you teach the other what you learn about your missed challenge. So this is called back visioning. You need to do that for everything. And now we do back visioning on work, on project, on processes the whole time. So this is extremely important. Of course, to move forward, you need to do feedback uh, all the time. So the rest of the week, I don't care anymore. They're adult enough. I don't have to control anything anymore. They just control their project. They do. I, I just uh, trust them uh, fully. So what's great is that now this space is now open to do other things. 
not to be always in the studio or the agency. And something crazy happened. Half of my team now works only four days a week. It, and it's crazy because we can do even better work, working less by using these processes. So we've, we've moved now the uh, back visioning on Monday morning before the new challenges. So this is really important. You need to exchange between your talents in your team. So the takeaways. The first thing that I realized that is absolutely crazy on top of the well-being of the team and the quality of the output is you attract clients that want that as well. So you, you at that moment, for example, we do inclusions now with, with uh, clients. I did that with the team of the opera, which, which was crazy. To, and then it opens honesty, uh, openness, you can be totally transparent, you can tell someone, I don't like it, and you wouldn't feel offended. It's crazy. So a list of clients, is, it's, it's good. We're working for the Prince Foundation, the New York Times, Apple, and smaller client, or, or Yves, Saint Laurent, Yves Saint Laurent in Paris, or MoMA, or like, I mean, it's crazy. And they, they come to us not only because of our work, but mainly because of our way of working. So you have to express that. So that's the next point. If you have that philosophy, now that we are um, communicating on that, we did some things like that, but people feel that, it's, they feel that it's true. This is a slide from our anniversary at MoMA, where we did a trade with MoMA and we did our party at MoMA. Can you imagine for me being this guy from Brussels at the door at MoMA saying, welcome to my party. I was like, what the fuck, this is crazy, right? So. Um, this, these were beautiful moments when you can gather your team around a philosophy and, uh, and, uh, and that idea of what the company should be. So you can, if you want, you can buy a bag downstairs. And, um, and the next point is that you don't cast so much on skills, you cast on personalities. So you probably know this, um, you know these little books for kids? Um, and the key thing is actually, when you have a Mr. Quiet in your team, don't ask him to be Mr. Nervous or mis be Mr. Loud. Just get him to be the best Mr. Quiet ever. Same with Mr. Strong or Mr. Noisy. He can be noisy. Let him to be Mr. or Mrs. Noisy. And this is how we cast people now at BASED. In the first five minutes, it's like, do I want to have this person with his own personality with us for the next... I don't know, two, five, ten years. So I even offer these little books to my team sometimes. It took me two hours to find the appropriate book to each one of them. Um, and um, this is also important. This is, all this is actually not true because we're questioning that every morning. This question of feedback makes that a lot of people are coming to me like, hey, this doesn't work so well. I have an idea about to change that process, to change this in the company, to improve our way to work together. This is a good slide coming from our studio in New York. They did a creative meeting on creative meetings. Like, what? So, um, and, uh, and the good thing is when you have more time, you have time to create your own project. So, for example, for pro bono job, before we were taking pro bono, we would give them to interns, doing it late because it was like, Oof. so now we, we had time to take, for example, this kick cancer um, pro bono work for, um, to get money to research for cancer for kids. The problem is that uh, all the money is going for cancer for older uh, people because it's best, better business, so it's a scandal. So we got this woman and we said we would work for free, putting all the resources a, such a, a job would take. So there were six people working on it, the digital team, photographers, all for free. So this is kind of the image we did, like basically kids wearing clothes that were too big for them, the same way the medication are in cancer. So we created a, a, a kind of a Kickstarter style uh, uh, project uh, website where people would put money uh, in it and this thing uh, got half a million in four months. So the team was also very proud and you could feel that we have impact and then we organized with them the run to kick race with Angel race, we would call and, and all this thing is like a positive thing and the run to kick cancer uh, race uh, 600,000 in one day. So. Um, so these myths, misleading myths about our industry. 
And I will end up with that. Um, the first one is obviously this one. Oh, our clients are stupid, and we're so clever and creative. No, they're not stupid. They're people. They're afraid, they're scared sometimes. We need to talk to them, we need to talk to them. We need to make them our partners. So it's really important not to think that it's untrue. Just see them as real people, great people. And the more you act like that, the more they, they will feel at ease. They're also paying us for things that they can do themselves. So, of course, there are things that they don't know, so you have, we have to teach them. So that's bullshit. The second thing is working crazy hours is totally normal. No, it's not normal. And, we, and you do less good work when you work crazy hours. Seen? We, we work less hours at base and we're doing better projects and we uh, have more fun and uh, we have time to do other things. So we are better creative people. The next one is some people are creative and, other as, uh, and others are not. Bullshit. Anyone can have an idea. No problem. Just put them together. And anyone, a formerly account manager, can have the best idea. So you just have to allow that. So to allow them to express their idea. That's the problem. So don't split people into groups. Another thing about splitting. Dividing people based on skills uh, makes sense. No, it doesn't. Since I put my people together when I have a, a, a programmer seated to a, a copywriter or an art director and you blend these people together, they learn from each other. It's, it's a really great. So this is also, for me, bullshit. Don't split them. And finally, and this is probably the most important thing, we tend to, to think that our, our industry is like that. It's always going to be like that. It's totally untrue. You can change your company. You can change your processes. You can change the way you behave with your clients. You can change everything you want, and that's creativity. You can start with your own company, your own people, and your own business. So that's bullshit. Thank you. <laughs>